When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. In this Money 101 episode, I'm breaking down how to think about debt, strategies to pay it off, and why being completely debt-free might not be the best goal. Welcome to Everyone's Talking Money Podcast. I'm your host, Shauna Game. There's no judgment, no dumb questions, just smart conversations about you and your money. So come on in and grab a seat. Everyone is welcome here. Welcome back to another Money 101 episode. This episode is all about debt, everyone's favorite subject, right? And just a quick note, this episode is not just for newbies. This is for everyone because we all struggle with debt, whether we're in debt, we've come out of debt. Debt is always weighing on our minds. There's a real psychological aspect to money, which I talk about in a lot of our episodes. And the reason I do this is because I know that this is where most of us get hung up around money. There's so much muck that we just don't understand that that comes to the table when we're making money decisions. And so I'm always offering you an invitation in to just pause and think about your money from a different perspective. So when I was a working, a practicing certified financial planner, and I was a CFP for about 10, 12 years, worked with all sorts of different clients, people who were just starting out, people who made a lot of money, people who had $100 million in assets. So I've really seen the gamut. And I can tell you that people of all ages, people of all incomes, people of all net worths had a hard time figuring out how to get a handle on debt. And it usually was from the mindset around debt. So we're going to dive into that a little bit deeper. So you are not alone if you are struggling with debt. According to CNBC, the average American has over $90,000 in debt. And that was according to uh, 2021 numbers. And I believe that. But I also believe that it doesn't make you a bad person. There are a lot of money experts out there. You could probably uh, pop up a few names in your head when I'm talking about this right now that shame you into believing that your debt is a bad thing, that you are a bad person, that you are a bad human. If you have credit card debt, if you have mortgage debt, whatever debt you might have. And I am here, if you're listening to this show, you are going to hear me, a certified financial planner, a money expert, who has worked with hundreds and hundreds of people tell you that your debt is not a bad thing. It is not something that you can't overcome. All right. So I want you to just hear that right now. So before we hop into some strategies, I want to share a little bit more about my story because I'm all about transparency on this podcast. So I didn't understand debt as a kid. I grew up in a family who was upper middle class, 
Uh, we never had to worry about food or clothes on our back. We had a nice house. My father was the sole income earner in our house. Um, he worked almost all the time. We were practically raised by my mom, as I imagine most people were in my in my neighborhood. I mean, that was just sort of how things operated. The dads went off to work and the moms stayed home and raised the kids. But I didn't understand debt. And I really didn't understand debt until I went to college and got my first credit card. And I was dating somebody when I was in college and proceeded to just go out and buy him all of these gifts on my credit card so that he would like me more, which is a really bad idea. But what I didn't understand was what was going on with me. I also grew up in a family that was kind of a status-driven family. So I thought, well, if you buy people gifts, then they must like you more. You must be more valuable. And that is completely ridiculous. <laughs> but it caused me a lot of debt. And it took me a long time to figure this out. So I had quickly maxed out my credit card in college. And I probably, I can't remember exactly, but I think I probably got a second credit card. And I'm sure I got close to maxing that out. So I was always in this place where I was just kind of paying what you needed to pay and I don't know, just kind of using that debt. But I didn't really understand debt to the extent that I understand it now. And I grew up in a very uh, financially focused family. My dad was in the financial industry. So there was talk about stocks and investments and things like that. But some of these core money concepts weren't talked about. So I would imagine that you probably have that same experience. Maybe you went to college or you got out of high school, you got a credit card, and you didn't really know what to do with it other than charge things on this thing, right? But I paid off my college debt, but I just kept buying a bunch of stuff that I really didn't need. And my priorities were all out of whack. And I think that it's almost important for most of us to go through that period of time because it's kind of when you get to the end of your rope, that is when you start saying, okay, I need to figure out something different. And for me, it, it took me well into my 30s to get to the end of that rope. So don't feel bad if you're still kind of in this place where you really want to pay off your debt, but it's just not happening. So I seesawed in my 20s between having credit card debt and not having it. And I got married at 24 to someone who was a little bit older than I was. And we decided because this is what you do when you're 24 and you're 29 is you buy a house. And we lived in Los Angeles. So prices weren't cheap. I think the house was somewhere around $339,000, way more house than a 24 and 29 year old at that point had enough money to buy. Somehow we just barely made it through. But we made it somehow, right? So then we ended up getting in a bit more credit card debt. But also, at the same time, we also really grew my retirement savings to well over 200000 by my late 20s. So I don't know, I always talk about balance. So even though we had credit card debt, we did have a lot in retirement savings. So it all kind of balanced out and we did have a plan for playing off the debt. But I mean, to be honest, we definitely lived above our income. <laughs> I've done this for most of my life and it's kind of been my mental struggle around uh, income and debt. And it's it's been my walk, that, my journey, I should say, that I've been on. So I got divorced in my very early 30s. And because I was the only one working at the time, I had to also take on the financial responsibility and make some really tough choices that included things like giving up that very nice large retirement plan and taking on a bunch more debt. <laughs> so yeah, that wasn't a fun time. And it was a real a mental struggle for me to be in my early 30s and to see what we had accomplished, but then also to just have this realization point that because of just the dynamics and the way things were that I needed to just let go of this. So at that time, I really hated to look at my ATM receipts or think about money. I was just, I was really pissed off. 
But I was also a financial planner with a certified financial planner degree, and I was working with clients. So what I started to see, though, when I really opened my eyes, I started to see some patterns in them that were the same patterns that were also happening in me. So I started to see the role our feelings and thoughts play into our debt. And these thoughts and feelings, how they play into getting out of debt. So I kind of saw this dynamic happening and I I really started to pay attention to it. I also saw how some really wealthy people use debt as leverage to build their wealth. So my friend in my camp, again, being in debt is not necessarily a bad thing. And I don't think the goal should ever be that you're completely debt free for the rest of your life. I want you to hear that. I'm not saying that paying off debt is a bad thing. No, not at all. I'm just saying that sometimes in your life, taking on some debt when you have a plan in place is probably actually pretty smart. You just need to know how to use it wisely. So for example, some money lessons I learned watching all of these different people, all these different ages, all these different incomes, all these different net worths were that debt over 7% interest rate is considered expensive debt. I don't know how 7% kind of became this marker, but I go by it to this day. So paying off high interest credit cards is always a good idea because those are usually, unless you get a special offer that is around 0%, those are usually way over 7%. So, you know, credit cards are really this... um, mechanism, this tool that can be super helpful. I love to use my credit card for our everyday kind of expenses to get points and cash back. But if I don't pay them off, then I've got that hefty, you know, 20% plus interest rate, which is just this serious drag. So if you're looking into debt payoff and specifically around credit cards, the first thing you have to do is work on the behavior around charging more to your credit cards, right? Because otherwise it just kind of keeps this cycle going. So the objective also is not to have a house payment in retirement. So if you can buy a house with a lower than 7% interest rate, and I know interest rates are getting a little bit higher, but you can pay it off before retirement, that gives you lots of options. But I believe paying off your mortgage early, entirely, when you're young, isn't always the best idea if it means sacrificing other things. So if paying off your mortgage means you can't invest, you can't grow your money, um, you know, you're, you're not contributing to your 401k, all of those things, then I don't think it's necessarily the best idea. Because even when you pay off your house, for most of us, we're going to end up moving into some other house. I think it's very rare that nowadays we kind of stay put in the place that we initially first bought. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. It does happen. But I know that most of us want to move to a different house. Maybe we want to get a bigger house. Maybe we start having a family. So if we paid off our first house and maybe we've sacrificed uh, saving for retirement or just other things, and then we go buy another house, we're probably going to have a mortgage again. So At the end of the day, this really does come down to personal preference. If you tell me, Shauna, paying off my mortgage just helps me sleep at night, then great. That is fantastic for you. But I'm talking about these big sweeping statements that everybody needs to be debt free, that everybody needs to pay off everything ASAP isn't always the best advice. The last thing I learned was that there are only two ways to pay off debt. You don't need a calculator. You don't need to be a money expert. And you can come back to these ways over and over again with ease. That is the beauty of this. And there are so many, if you just type in debt payoff calculator online, you're going to find so many different results. And all you do is just plug in the numbers. It couldn't be easier. So let's talk strategy. You for sure have probably heard of at least one of these two methods, so snowball or avalanche, but what I like to call them is highest interest or lowest debt. So the beauty is that you just pick one of these methods and you stick to it 
throughout your entire debt payoff. So it doesn't matter if you have two credit cards, five credit cards, two credit cards, a student loan, a car payment. It doesn't matter what the mix is of credit that you have. What matters is the strategy that you're going to use to attack it. And for most of us, we just don't do a strategy, right? So let's say you figure out, okay, I think I'm going to have like $100 extra this month. So I'm just going to throw a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit there. I call that the sprinkler method. The sprinkler method doesn't work. It's not an effective method to actually pay down the debt. The two methods, going back to what I just said, was highest interest and lowest debt. Financial anxiety, anyone? Yeah, you're not alone. But worrying about it, it doesn't help. Earnin does. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. You just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then you can access up to $100 per day as you work and leave an additional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. So how would you spend the money you get from Earnin? Well, honestly, my hubby and I have been feeling a little bit disconnected lately. That's what happens after you've been together about 12 years. So I would spend the money on a special date night with dinner and maybe bowling, you know, to bring back some of that giggly excitement that we both felt at the beginning. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security, gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E-A-R-N-I-N, in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in Talkin, T-A-L-K-A-N, money under podcast when you sign up. It will really help the show. Talkin money under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash TOS for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank & Trust, member FDIC. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news... Well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps, but I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. It gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built-in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. All right, let's look at some examples to bring this to life. 
So let's say you have three debts. You have a car payment, you have a payment of $350, that's your minimum payment. It's 5% interest rate. And let's say you owe $10,000. You have a credit card that has a $3,000 balance with an 18% interest rate, $75 minimum payment. And you have a second credit card with a $5,000 balance, a 26% interest rate, and $125 minimum payment. So total your payments are $550 a month if we're just making these minimum payments. Now let's say you've done some good cash tracking. If you've not listened to that episode, that Money 101 episode, I will link it in the show notes. Go back and listen to all about cash tracking. And you figured out that you have an extra $150 a month on top of the $550 that you can put towards your debt. Now this extra amount of money, it could be anything. Let's say you only find $25 or maybe you have $400. It could be any amount. So don't focus on exactly what the extra is, right? It's going to be different for all of us. So again, the common method is to do the sprinkler effect where I will just sprinkle that money across all of my debts and fingers crossed, legs crossed, We'll just hope that it works, but this method doesn't work. It's not effective. So we got to go back to our two strategy methods, right? Our highest interest rate, that is going to help us save a little bit more money, but the lowest debt method is the better option mentally to get your head around. So I always choose the lowest debt method because to me, it just kind of keeps me motivated. If I pay off the lowest debt, right, and I can see the progress I'm making quicker, what that's doing is it's giving like a a jolt. It's like, you know, drinking a cup of espresso from my brain where it's saying, hey, this stuff actually is working. Like you're actually paying off your debt. You better keep going. You better keep making good intentional money decisions. And that's what you want. You want that sort of bolt that little fire to go off in your head so that you stay motivated. So let's say that we've chosen the highest interest rate option, that that's the one that feels really good to us. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that $150, right? And we are going to start using that on top of these minimum payments, So I'm going to take it to card number two, which has the highest interest rate of all my debts. And I'm going to add this on top of the minimum payment for that card. And I'm going to pay the minimum payment on all my other debts. Once that card is paid off, then I'm going to move to card number one and pay the $75 minimum payment plus the $275 from the first card that I had been paying. And then once that's paid off, I'm going to go and move to my car payment. So the objective, if I'm using my strategy, I'm going to have this all paid off in two years. Again, there are tons of calculators online that will just automatically do this math for you. One of my favorites is on calculator.net. I will link it in the show notes. And it's super easy to use. But my point is, You don't have to make the math part of figuring out how to pay off your debt get in the way of paying off the debt. So we can come up with all these excuses, especially when it comes to money of why I just can't figure something out or why I just don't want to do something. And then you kind of keep stuck in the same cycle. But if you're listening to this episode, I know that you want to break that cycle. And so that is what we're going to work to do. So, okay, you've got your two different methods. That's it. That's all you need to know from the strategy point. But let's say they still aren't working. You're not seeing the debt go down. We've got to reverse the car a bit. And we've got to talk about some things that might be happening that you aren't consciously aware of. All right. So number one, we need to talk about why do you spend money? And most people say, well, it's just because I want the item. Okay. Okay. I get it for sure. I've bought plenty of things just because I wanted it. But we got to dig a little bit deeper and we got to look at why. So some things to think about. Are you an anxious or stressed out spender? Maybe you're actually buying something that makes you feel better, even just in a minute. But then you might have some sort of regrets later. Do you feel like you deserve this item or is it like a revenge spend, right? 
um, maybe something bad happened to you in the day and you're just like, ah, F it. I'm just going to go out and I'm just going to spend money, right? We're all guilty of these things. Do you spend because you feel like something is missing in life and this item or items, maybe that feels a void for you. Maybe that feels to you like it grounds you some. Have you suffered from money trauma? Maybe from a relationship, maybe in your family, maybe in your career. Money trauma is very, very common. I'm going to do an episode on this coming up. I'm a certified money trauma expert, and we're going to walk all through money trauma. Shipping can make or break a sale, so optimize how you ship your orders with ShipStation. They make it easy to automate and manage orders no matter how big your business grows, and they might even be able to help reduce shipping and warehouse costs. So optimize and keep up your momentum for growth with ShipStation. Sign up for your free 60-day trial now at ShipStation.com and use the code POD. That's ShipStation.com with the code POD. I've got kids, and that means it's always about them. But I need support, too. That's where Ollie comes in, with their delightful, hardworking gummies. My partner and I can actually get a good night's sleep, so we'll both stand a chance of managing our stress responses. Even when the kids are doing parkour in the living room, discover Ollie vitamins and supplements. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Hello, Saver. Whether you're saving for that trip to the tropics or saving for an emergency, now is the time to take advantage of Wells Fargo's savings options. Wells Fargo offers savings accounts that can help you save towards your goals. So, what are you saving for? Visit a Wells Fargo branch or wellsfargo.com slash save to open a savings account today. Wells Fargo Bank N.A. Member FDIC. So what's your why for spending money on things you know you can't pay off in just a few months or you can't afford? So there is no shame in answering these questions to yourself. This is only for self-discovery, right? We're trying to get down to the base layer understanding of why especially credit card debt keeps happening, right? Why are you stuck in this cycle? Why can't you make progress on debt payoff? So number two, we need to think about why does this matter? Well, it's the root again of what's going on with your debt. It would be like if you went to the doctor and before he asked you what was wrong, he or she uh, or they, let me just be correct here because it's very important that I do this. Uh, They, he, she, whoever this doctor is, just gave you some random medicine and said to take it. Well, that doesn't work, right? We've got to know why you keep getting into debt for any debt payoff to work, right? We've got to understand like the diagnosis. I hope you get where I'm going here. We got to get the diagnosis of what's happening before we can start applying these strategies on top, right? Number three, maybe you've heard of that new weight loss company called Noon, They do lots of different uh, commercials. I see them a lot on social media. So it works on the thinking behind the eating to help you lose weight. Well, the same thing applies to your money, really any money goal. What is going on in your brain is 90% of the battle. So this doesn't make you a bad person. No, 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 no. Spending time to think about the why behind your spending patterns and debt actually makes you someone who is learning intentional spending and we'll finally be able to break the patterns that have kept you stuck, right? So doing this, taking some time, thinking about these things, they will, I guarantee you, change your relationship to money and change your debt patterns. Another great exercise to uncover the why is what I call a money timeline. So very simply, you can just get out a piece of paper, open a new Word doc on your computer. I want you to write out all the good and not so good things that have happened to you around money. So what I do is I draw a line and above the line, I write all the good things that have happened to me around money. I write my age and then I write what that thing was. Below the line, I write all of the not so good things 
with the age and any of those, you know, details that I have that have happened around money. So when I'm finished, I have this visual timeline where I can start to see some patterns. I can start to see maybe where I've gone into debt or where maybe some things have gone awry with my money. And it helps me to do this, this diagnosis of what is actually happening. Because when I know what is actually happening, then I can actually do something about it. But if I just go straight to the debt payoff strategies without thinking about this other stuff, I may pay off my debt, but more than likely, I'm still going to be stuck in kind of this debt swirl. So if nothing else, a good idea is just to create a pause before you buy something over a certain amount of money. So for me, that's $150. If I'm going to buy something that is more than $150, I have to wait at least 24 hours before I hit purchase online because I almost never buy anything in person anymore. But if I do, I use this this same method. So that does a couple of things. It gives me time to really think through, do I really need this? Am I going to use it? Will I feel any remorse if I buy it? And will it get in the way of actually achieving any other money goals or for me paying for my fixed expenses each month? So that's the stuff I have to pay. Is this going to hinder any of that? So it gives me some time to kind of think through that. And most times what happens is I don't end up buying the item, right? (laughs) So you can create your own rule. You can create your own timeline because this stuff really does work. It's an easy way to stop your brain from going into overdrive at the thought of buying something. You're working to actually break that impulse spending that is, it's just so easy to impulse spend. And what you're doing is saying, now I'm going to pause and I'm going to think about my why. And I'm going to think about even a small purchase, like how is this going to impact things? This is conscious money spending. This is intentional money. This is the way to just powerfully break chains and bonds and blocks that have held you hostage for so many years. And lastly, I want to go back and talk about the shame around debt. I think it's really important to spend some time here. I want to move to a place where you feel shameless. So having debt is not entirely bad. Again, if it's helping you or maybe your business advance, then in my book, it's not a bad thing. If you have debt with a low interest rate, like under 7%, then you're using debt, I believe, in a smart way. And it's very possible that you pay off your debt and you get back into debt. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this is the reality. So I think it's really important to talk about this. And the amount of people that do this is so incredibly small. The amount of people who live their entire life debt-free despite what, again, some other money experts who shall remain nameless want you to think. So I'm, I'm giving you permission to drop the shame because once you decide that you're going to put down whatever story you're making up in your head, whatever somebody has told you about debt, I know a lot of people in relationships where, especially when they're first dating, even married people, honestly, where the other partner really shames them for having debt, right? Like you're a bad person, you're ruining our future, all of this stuff, right? I want to just give you permission to just put down that heavy load of shame today because it is not helping you in the process of paying off the debt. It's not helping you certainly with your mindset, with your mental health around money. So just put that down and just I want you to just repeat out loud with me. Yes, I have debt. Yes, it's also going to be okay. All right, so I want you to just claim that today. Work on what you can. Spend some time with your intention. And when you don't, it's no biggie. When you go out and you impulse spend, it's not that big of a deal. So, you know, just kind of let that roll off your shoulder, right? Use one of these two methods. Use the highest interest rate or the lowest debt. Those are the only two methods that work to pay off debt. Pick one of the methods that feels really good to you and use it through the entire debt payoff. 
process. Connect to the why you want to pay off the debt, right? This might sound really ridiculous. Like, well, I want to pay off the debt because of course nobody wants to be in debt. Yeah, I get it, right? But why? What is that going to change in your life? Is that going to help you feel a lot lighter? Is that going to help you be able to buy a house? Is that going to help you feel better in your relationship? Is that going to help you leave your job and maybe start your own business? What is what is the why, the motivation for you to pay off the debt, right? If you could encapsulate that like in a picture or something that you print out and you just ping by your computer or by your phone, put it in your phone and look at it every single time you go to make a purchase over that spending amount. That again is attaching your brain to, okay, I don't necessarily need to buy this thing because this is my motivation. This is what I'm working towards. Just try it. Try it for a day. Try it for a week, right? I guarantee you it's going to kind of blow your mind. So use that as your motivation every day because my friend, this is a day-to-day, sometimes minute-by-minute process to cultivate these money behaviors that can help you make good intentional money choices. So if you feel frustrated Just know you are so not alone. So do what you can and just forget the rest. If you've enjoyed this episode, do me a favor, share it with a friend or family member, somebody who is also in this journey of debt payoff. And if you could do me a favor, go to whatever podcast player you're listening to this episode right now in and leave us a review for the show. I'll see you back here in a few days for a brand new episode. (music) 